empathizing with the real needs, desires, and wishes of uh, the existing and potential users out there when it comes to Bitcoin is, I think, one of the most critical, fundamental, and really required um, necessities if you want to onboard more and more users um, on every level. You know, uh, so this interplay, the tr the so-called trade-offs of uh, functionality, features, uh, uh, security, privacy, all these things with the user interface, user experience, user-friendly, um, uh, you know, operation is really critical. So I'm really excited to talk to uh, Celine and Mayank, uh, you know, some of the greatest UX designers out there in the Bitcoin space. And we're going to go down the rabbit hole many directions, but um, you know the question is um, why UX matters to Bitcoin or why is UX um, uh, you know so fundamentally important for critical adoption rate? And yeah, so looking forward to that. Uh, really excited. And if you have any questions, let me know. My DM or email is open. Uh, hello at the totalconnect.com, or you can follow me on. Twitter, Kevin Davani, and let me know your questions afterwards. Hope you're gonna love it as much as I did. And thanks so much. Bye. Welcome to the show. Mayank and Celine are my special guests today. Thanks so much for coming to my show. How are you guys? Yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, super excited to be back and more so with Celine this time. Yeah, thanks for having me as well. I'm uh, super excited. All right. Um, listen, guys, I mean, I've, I'm huge fans of, of your work and I'm a huge fan of whatever has to do with UX and uh, mm -hmm. uh, user experience design. And uh, because I think it's the key to um, it's it's um, it's something that serves, um, you know, not only the existing uh, users, but also the potential users in the future. And I think it's the essential key to making whatever you want to call it mass adoption, critical adoption rate, hyper Bitcoinization really possible. I think it's the really one of the most fundamental things uh, that we can do. Uh, with UX or uh, you know the use, user friendliness, the usability. So I want to ask you both of you: what is what is UX to you, and what are like the fundamental problems or challenges nowadays when you're working with product developers um, in order to you know to to make it more user friendly, in order to you know serve. Um, the, the the you know the existing potential user or customer what what is what is ux to you uh, wh why don't we just start with celine okay um so i think uh, a lot of people's understanding of ux is more like on the uh, micro level which is uh, more like related to the interface itself uh, but my understanding of ux is a way to close the gap between technology and people. What what by means that is it involves a lot of uh, methodology. It involves uh, psychological uh, knowledge in order to make things that make technology that makes sense to people. So like then it's it's kind of a quite broad concept. It can involve like you know how people are hearing about things. Uh, how how people uh, how people uh, how certain technical knowledge make uh, make sense to people and that also comes down to when they interact with a uh, certain technology each touch point like how how does it make it align with their mental model so it becomes intuitive and effortless to them gotcha wonderful yeah my uh what is it to you what is ux to you what does it mean um for, for me, uh, you know, if you uh, look at the word UX, uh, user experience, so it, it has nothing to do with uh, a specific technology or it has got even nothing to do with technology at all, right? So UX has existed for as long as there have been users, right? So users are uh, products or services. As long as someone is using your product or service, they're having a sort of an experience of using that. Right, so UX in itself is a neutral term. It doesn't mean good or bad or anything. It just defines the experience the user is going through, right? Um, now, when they are using your product or service, they have a specific 
reason or a goal to use that, right? And your goal as a business or as a service provider is to make them reach faster to their end goal. And UI design and delights and all of that stuff only makes it more positive and happy. But if you're not thinking from the perspective of shortening that distance, that friction from uh, opening up your product or you know taking your service and reaching that end goal, then your UX will suffer. So, so now when it comes to Bitcoin, you know, uh, it obviously uh, we can go into different fields like wallets or nodes, etc. But I mean, it's a it's technology agnostic uh, to me. Like when I when I look at um, you know whatever that is a hardware wallet, uh, you know it could be hardware software application, um, any kind of you know uh, tools that you know that's connected to Bitcoin. I mean, I as a really as a I consider as an average user, um, I know exactly at that moment whether that is something I can work with. Is it is you know is it intuitive? Uh, can I, you know, uh, does it guide, you know, the, the average user? Um, like, what is the balance? Or what, what kind of communication needs to be there between UX designers and product developers? Is there a lack of, like, uh, communication flow? Or, because um, I'm not in that process. What, can you, like, elaborate a little bit, both of you, like, on, on, the, on the process of collaboration and communication between product developers and UX designers? Uh, in the context of you know of, of features, functions, operability, user friendliness, um, intuitive handling of of the tools. Sure, Celine, you you want to go first? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So yeah, so just as I Mike, Mike uh, mentioned, um, I think to de define the goal of of the specific user group we are designing with is like the. For, yeah, crucial first step. Um, but in terms of the day-to-day -day collaboration between uh, different stakeholders, um, the one common issue is that UX being an afterthought. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, usually um, it's supposed to be uh, the ideal case is UX designer got involved in the first case, try to figure out who our user is and building persona uh, from those research and try to figure out what specifically they want. And from there, we branch out to try to brainstorming solutions, uh, like ideas that, not, not yet solutions actually, ideas that related to that persona, like what are likely uh, the, the pain points they will be have. And then we um, go to the step that actually start to think about solutions. But in the actual, uh, like a lot of day-to-day -day collaboration, uh, it's very often that the all the um, you know the ideal case is there is a roughly uh, group of user has been defined, and there's some feature probably already thought of and floating around without uh, connect to why we especially need those features. Probably it's more like. Um, like uh, sometimes it's business leaders, sometimes it's uh, developers, they, they just think that this is a cool feature or like they thought people might need it. And, and, and then they come they, they, with already all these presets and they come to the designer and say, hey, uh, let's uh, you know, ma ma make something that's easy and pretty. So that's something that very often happens, and uh, and that way usually make the UX less effective because uh, you know like if you already like I, I believe UX is a process of solving problems, but already you you think about a solution, what feature to build without even knowing who we are building for. Then you know like it it doesn't matter how pretty you make the UI is, it's like put lipstick on, on a pig. So that's my view. Yeah, Mike. Right. Yeah, I think Celine put it excellently. Uh, you know, the process of UX uh, starts at the audience. Uh, it doesn't start from the problem. And worse, it doesn't start from the solution. Uh, a lot of projects actually start from solutions and end up being solutions looking for problems, <laughs> right? So when you define the audience, like who is the audience? What is their skill level? What is their knowledge level? What is it uh, that they want to achieve, right? Uh, are they willing to pay for it? Uh, 
and you know how do they interact uh, with technology in their day-to-day -day life only then you move on to the problem right so if you're trying to build a one size fits all you know it's going to be very challenge challenging right so if you're only building as a developer if you start a building uh, if you don't think hard enough about the user uh, you will end up building uh, for someone who you think has the same knowledge level as you do right so that's where this whole argument comes from that oh they 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 shouldn't be using this uh, they need to learn their way through through this i think i think that's bs right so it's only because it's only you say that because you haven't thought about the audience right you haven't thought about you haven't empathized with that and uh, so i think the ux process of ux the collaboration only starts when you are that open minded that you are willing to empathize uh with the audience and willing to you know research uh into their minds so yeah yeah i think empathy or empathizing i mean it sounds maybe for a lot of people maybe a little bit esoteric but but empathy me it means like comprehension of the real needs and desires you know what does the end customer or you know the user really need you know and of mm -hmm. course it's you know nuanced and there's different you know ages and groups and social whatever uh backgrounds and intellectual maybe uh experience with with these kind of things i mean what what does empathy i mean is there is there a lack of empathy on on in that process on behalf of the i don't know product developers i mean do they uh, do they do testing groups like in in the from beginning in, in that process like do they ask people uh, is there some kind of like random questioning of <laughs> yeah i i think it depends from project to project uh I, i'm pretty sure blockstream as I, i i don't know uh uh but i i'm pretty sure from using their product uh green wallet is my go to wallet on mobile so i'm pretty sure they do that <laughs> i can i can feel it yeah i'm a huge uh, fan yeah yeah so it it depends from pro product to product uh, company to company how much they are investing into that what do they feel about it uh but, but i i i just want to address this take a step back and address this thing uh this there's also an argument that you know open source projects don't need to care about ux right it's it's something that only companies need to and uh you know thinking from first principles open source has nothing to do with ux right there's no correlation between the two because open source only means that all of your code is open right all of your source code is open it doesn't mean anything else like uh you can be for profit you can be non profit uh, you, you can be an enterprise product or you can be a consumer product right uh as long as you, someone is using your product as long as you have users uh you need to care about ux so it's got nothing to do with being for profit non profit closed source open source etc so that's where uh, a lot because in the space uh, you know we see a lot of open source projects because obviously you know the source code of bitcoin is open source uh, and you know being closed source is not it's it's not the way to do things in this space right so there's this notion uh, that's very popular so i i just wanted to take a moment to you know give my two cents on that Yeah, definitely agree. So I think another thing um, people are mixing these concepts is uh, because, you know, usually in that business uh, business environment, there are like a top down kind of level of def definition of you know what's the business goal is and like like for example some uh, if, if you want to uh, design the buy bitcoin experience for like a high net worth individuals or you want to make an exchange for traders so there is like a, a like a predefined top down level of thing there but then in open source projects there's often uh first of all like usually people are kind of going freestyle just uh, building without the process which bring back to the uh first question that that we talk about like the really important for ux to be effective you need to define the goal and define the user first but that's often lacking in open source project um another thing is uh in a business environment uh, there's usually a deadline like chasing you like you you have to be able to uh, accomplish these things in two milestones but in open source often you know people are kind of uh, loosely collaborating and contributing there's no deadline and it 
if something you know drifting too long it it can drift from one direction to another and the technology itself also advances and it changes and then something you did like a couple months ago may not be effective anymore so that's something unique uh, about open source and if we want to improve bitcoin ux that's something we need to address mm -hmm. um Okay, you know, let me give you like a concrete example. I mean, um, I'm, I'm using um, uh, um, the the, uh, the the my node as a full node, you know, because I had converted my my casa to uh, into a into a my node, and you know, I love the the whole display, and you know, it looks really slick, and it's it's uh, and most of the things really uh, work smoothly, but some of the things I'm like. Um, I mean, I, I would consider myself, you know, as a, as a Bitcoiner with a little bit more, you know, above average experience, you know, that's it. Uh, but I'm just, you know, empathizing with the average user out there and, and you see all the questions, you know, popping up on Telegram in their Telegram groups. So I'm like, is, could there be a way to direct or guide the average user during that process when, for example, whatever connecting their specific wallets to, you know, to their node, to the my node, to the full node? Um, and do you see like a possibility to, to improve that process to uh, with, with UX? Whether that be, you know, a pop-up of a... Um, of a of a warning or information or like a, a guiding process with ux is that like do, do you know what i mean yeah i think i think you're talking about the onboarding experience mm -hmm. right so if someone is you know uh using let's say a full node uh for the first time or a hardware wallet for the first time the onboarding experience should teach them and uh, make them aware of the new concepts which uh they may be uh alien to right so uh but uh definitely uh guides and education can go a long way so if there's uh, uh if everything is very well documented if it's up on the product's website and if they can you know quickly go through the doc uh, read through the faqs then that helps uh but i think good ux is intuitive uh it's inclusive uh so it it subconsciously like it doesn't like it, there's not a lot of text that teaches you uh, but the steps that you go through, uh, they teach you everything you need to know about using the product. So that's a very that's that's easier said uh, than done, right? And that's why you need to put a lot of uh, effort into the research and empathizing with the audience that's going to uh, use your product. Uh, but the end goal should be that they shouldn't have to go spend hours on Stack Overflow yeah. and. Uh, uh, researching on DuckDuckGo for like hours and just to find out how to connect your full node uh, to, to your hardware wallet. So there should be an easy button somewhere. Just to give you an example, I haven't used my node, so I can't speak for that. But let's say uh, you see Bitcoin Core and you say connect. You click connect, you say choose your wallet, and let's say you select Wasabi, and then you see the instructions, and that's it. You shouldn't need to go in, into a Telegram, ask the maintainer or whatever. You understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. What was the uh, Celine? What was uh, what was it like to work on the? Um, I guess you you worked from beginning on the Blockstream Green Wallet uh, on the UX design. Is yeah. Yeah. So uh, actually, um, I'm kind of redesigned it because uh, before, uh, not sure if you are aware of there was the Green address that was the original mm. uh, wallet with all mm -hmm. the feature act and multi sig, you know, all those advanced features. So basically. Uh, that that wallet has like a lot of advanced features, uh, but it's like kind of more targeting at a, a technical user group. So so we want to bring Bitcoin to like a like a broader audience. Mm -hmm. So that's the first goal to make it very straightforward for anyone who come into uh, Bitcoin. They can download this uh, Bitcoin focused wallet. Although that we, we also have like liquid, which is our own side chain there. But the thing is, it doesn't really affect the use of the Bitcoin wallet. So mm -hmm. it's for, for, for someone who want to use an export or liquid assets, they can do so. But for someone who 
prefer to only use Bitcoin. It's it's also easy for enough for them. So that was the goal. Um, while we were still uh, need to consider and cap the uh, legacy uh, features because that there are like a lot of people who are really uh, like they they like they like the security aspect of the wallet and they 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 like to use certain features and we are still keeping it there. So that was the like kind of the process of redesigning. Mm -hmm. yeah. gotcha. And I and I also love the fact that you have also given the option uh, for the user to switch to testnet. I don't know why that's not common among the uh, mobile wallets, but you know I use it for testing purposes all the time. Uh, so it's a major problem. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, recently I think like you know like because i can i came to bitcoin as a like non technical noob and it was only until blockstream that that was the first time i actually start to look into bitcoin so mm -hmm. the the first thing i did is uh, you know i i tried to see if there is a way i can just play around with all the bitcoin transactions without mm -hmm. losing money right um right. and and i i think i think testnet is an excellent tool and you can you can do, use all the force how do exactly the same thing as like the main ads. but I just feel like it it's only being used as a like a developer tool. Uh, well, while it's really also really hard to find in you know uh, just like an easy Google uh, search results because you need to dig really deep to find there's like this test net for set thing. Okay. So it's a lot of people they never find it right if they didn't have any guidance i i was lucky because i have amazing colleagues who who are like definitely bitcoin maximalists and, and they <laughs> tell me that it's for testing i can play around with but but then i i think there's a lot of potential for testnet actually used as an educational tool for us to you know try to help people understand and use bitcoin what's 100%. the feed what's the feedback you receive from from users, I mean, do you, uh, Celine, f when it comes to Blockstream Greenwall, by the way, is it true that um, I, I, I heard something or I read something or you tweeted something about the re red wallet? Is, is that because of the color <laughs> red because it brings good luck or something in, in Asian countries? That's why it's called red wallet in, in Asian countries? Is that true? Instead of green? Uh, this is. <laughs> this is um... Well, like, like uh, that means this is kind of a successful joke. Actually, it was just an attempt <laughs> of <Okay>, April <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, our our like our graphic designer like recolor it. Uh, sh her name is Victoria. She's amazing, and, and, oh, and she recolored it. And we, we just decided to you know make this joke. So originally, it was uh, Samson's idea to say, oh, you know. Uh, we should be able to use Bitcoin on uh, Mars. So, you know, Mars is <laughs> red. That's why we have Blockstream Green Wallet and then Blockstream Red. But 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 I just had that another random idea because I, I was originally from China. I was like, you know, red is the lucky color. Why don't we make another joke of it? Because it's, <laughs> it's always the, you know, the confusion of red green uh, candlestick uh, in, in the trading graphs because like you know the asia in, in china the, the red is up the green is down it's completely opposite oh and, and gotcha traders, okay that's yeah they got really confused that's that's why it's kind of the, the joke you know yeah <laughs> hilarious <laughs> so funny but i'm glad you actually believed it <laughs> well i believed it you fooled me well you know so um <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk about um, Umbrel, um, uh, Mayank, um, and I want to talk about Blockstream too. I mean, I, I mean, if you can share some, uh, you know, some things on the, you know, what is on the roadmap or vision for Blockstream. Um, before we go over to Umbrel, um, is it called Umbrel or Umbrel? Is it Umbrel, Mayank? Umbrel. Umbrel, okay. Yeah. Like, um, I love the Blockstream wallet, and I, you know, I managed to connect it, you know, with the Onion address, uh, you know, to my node. The only thing that not only me but others maybe had issues, but I think they're working on it, is this SPV connection because it either, you know, it either had some synchronization problems. I think SPV stands for Simplified Payment Verification or something. So, um, so yeah, maybe you can uh, pass that on, <laughs> Celine. But otherwise, you know, I love the green wallet. It's, it's one, it's really, I think it's a, uh, for a lot of people, it's a standard wallet, you know, uh, online, uh, is there, is a there lightning on it too, or is it planned to, to integrate lightning? No, or? 
well, we we have uh, we have light sea lightning team, and they are doing amazing work. So definitely, it's on our, our roadmap to add lightning into a wallet. But uh, you know, Blockstream is building a lot of stuff, and and that 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 kind of you know we have to find out how to implement that. But but it's it's coming. Great, great. Okay, Mayank, um, do you want to talk about a little bit your project? Because uh, a lot of people have been impressed. Uh, you know. Uh, I think it was the uh, uh, Matt Odell and, and Marty uh, uh, talked about it on the Tales of the Crypt even, right? Yeah, that was a good shout out. Someone tagged us and said, you know, we got a shout out. So it was uh, very refreshing to see that. Uh, yeah, I mean, Umbrel, uh, what we are trying to do is completely re redesign the full node experience. And uh, the reason we chose full nodes and not, let's say, wallets or any other thing is because uh, if you go deep down, right, if you go like if you if you uh, doubt all the truths and you go to the fundamental truth of how Bitcoin operates, there's only one thing that matters, which is the nodes. Right. Uh, and nodes have subsets. So full nodes, mining nodes, pruned nodes, et cetera, et cetera right uh, but if there are no nodes there's no bitcoin right so if you're not participating in the consensus uh bitcoins mean bitcoin means nothing right so and for a user to interact with the bitcoin network if there's an intermediary in between let's say their wallet operator or an exchange or whatever then we are introducing the same risks as the centralized system because at the end of the day if you're not running the full node you are dependent on someone else's full node. It's not that you're not dependent on a node, it's that you are you end up using uh, someone's node, whether you know it or not, right? So uh, if you're using a public uh, explorer or whatever, right? So, uh, uh, and if not a lot of people end up running nodes and if not, the system is not decentralized, then what's, what's the point of this whole thing, right? So, uh, it, it doesn't really matter at the end if uh, if people don't participate in the consensus. So that's why we wanted to work on the full node experience. And full nodes are great, like you know, privacy-wise, security-wise, in terms of feature, you have the whole blockchain. You can create it. You can run your own explorers. There's tons of apps, uh, BTC Pay server, uh, Coin Join apps, etc. So full nodes ha are getting more and more useful, even with Lightning, right? Uh, sure, you can use Lightning without a full node too, but uh, it's it's a uh, it's more private and it's uh, it's uh, it's more a uh, self one way to use full nodes. So that's where and uh, it was born out of a personal frustration with the entire stack of uh, running a full node. Uh, so last year when I uh, when I brought down, uh, I was running a full node on the cloud, right? So there's no cloud; it's just someone else's computer, right? So I was running it on the cloud and I wanted to run on a Raspberry Pi, and uh, you know it was just painful. <laughs> So, and for someone like uh, with a design and development background, uh, my mind was constantly racing on what, how can, what can we do about it? And, you know, and the more I got into it, the more like, it, it felt like, it felt like art, the way the whole system is, works with the base layer as the, the source of truth, which is the blockchain, and then you build upon it. So if, if you're not participating on the base layer, nothing else matters. So that's where Umbrella was born. For who who's the who's the potential user i mean is it anybody is it like um because if you yeah you know that that was also the the discussion on twitter often is like yeah it's good if you have a a node but if people are not using it to sell to, mm -hmm. to validate it you know mm -hmm. what's the use of it and it's just you know a gimmick <laughs> you know so right for who, because you who's... can end up launching as many nodes on the cl cloud or aws or wherever as you want mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean anything. It, that doesn't decentralize the system. It only decentralizes the system when you're actively using your own full node. Uh, so the target audience, like the target user, I think is a, it's a it's a multi-step process. You know, we are not targeting everyone. We are not ta targeting all. Uh, we are ta right now the target users are the tech literate people in the Bitcoin space that already understand the concepts. We don't need to teach them for now. But eventually, we want to get to the stage where it's the default. Like you you. Because if you're not, you want to like you want to feel like a guilt or a weird, a uh, little weird if you're not running a full node. We want to get there where every user like it becomes normal 
for them to interact with the Bitcoin network only and only using their full node and nothing else. So, but it's 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 a long journey. So, is it already in? Um, I mean, uh, people can re pre-register, or how does it work? I mean, have you have you have you done yeah. testing or people? Honestly, I. Uh, it, yeah, I'm it, just it, you, I'm just showing the interface. I'm trying to find the interface how it looks like. Yeah, for the YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, people can register, uh, leave their email uh, on the website to get early access. We'll have a rollout phase rollout launch uh, where we will, uh, you know, send uh, access to like first hundred users, then the next hundred users on the list, then the next hundred users on the list. We want to have like a controlled launch. It's obviously free. You can you'll be able to run it on your own uh, Raspberry Pi three or four. And if you are if you are you know if you know what you're doing and if you're comfortable with shell uh, and with terminal, then you can basically run it on any Linux based system. In fact, uh, because all of our source code is open source, you know all of our code is public. People are actually running it right now. Uh, they you know they they don't want to <laughs> they don't want to waste their time sitting on a wait list. So they're going to the GitHub. Uh, they are reading the instructions and you know they're getting their way out of it and someone actually even uh, contributed to the source code of it uh so yeah and it's great right it's another uh you know open source project right so yeah I so took a sleep peek, by the way. it looks really cool oh really yeah she, she used yeah. it today right <laughs> a few hours ago i guess <laughs> you are tracking me <laughs> <laughs> no 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 I, because you got back to me, I asked for your feedback. You got back to me like a few hours ago. <laughs> okay, That's why I'm right just... in time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't even use VPN to access that. So, <laughs> oh, okay, we don't we don't have any <laughs> trackers or all of the okay. code is again <laughs> open source. But yeah, stay true to Bitcoin. Sorry, stay true to Bitcoin. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So what what? what what else can you do with the umbrella? I mean, what do you have on the roadmap? Is it is it like comparable? Would it be comparable to whatever, like any other like full node uh, mm -hmm. software application? Or I, I think Bitcoin's killer application right now is Lightning, right? Uh, so we want to focus only on Bitcoin and Lightning for now. Like set the foundation, set a strong foundation in place, which is sustainable long term. So uh, so. Yeah, I mean, right now we want to make it easy for people to just get on board a uh, full node and start using Lightning in the most self-sovereign way, in the most private and secure way possible, and then we'll take things from there. So that's when we'll we'll introduce more apps. Yeah, I mean, I can only tell you, you gave it to me. To, you know, you um, we talked we talked previously, and I tested it, and it really it's it's super like uh, intuitive, like the whole. You know interface uh, it's it, that's what what i love about you know like when you go into that kind of of, of tools that uh, as an average user really from perspective as an average user i'm like i know exactly what i'm doing you know mm -hmm. frictionless yeah i mean user. confidence right yeah yeah confidence is key like you want you want to feel in control of things right you want to feel like you want to be confident when you click that withdraw button when you click that deposit button when you click that connect button like you know what you're doing so that that's been uh, very important for us when we were designing this. And uh, I, but never mind. Yeah, go ahead. So so Celine, um, um, how many how many UX designers are on the Blockstreams team? Is that you or or like how many people are there? Yeah. So currently, uh, we have two UX designers, uh, including myself. And then uh, on, on on my team, there's also a communication designer, and there's also web developer, uh, who who actually have great interest in UX as well. So I I'm so glad to have them, and you know, like we we just work together and and try to figure out a lot of stuff. Is there anything that you can share on, on Blockstream's project? Is there anything on the roadmap or that you can talk about? Um, well, there will be no surprise if I tell you everything right now. Okay. <laughs> you know, Blockstream always like, hits the Twitter by surprise, right? Like suddenly it kind of announced something new. So, uh, but, but, but I can tell you that we are going to have some uh, new consumer product coming later this year. Um, at the same time, we are also uh, 
like building like a lot of uh, better experience for like enterprise products. So, oh, yeah, great. That's mm -hmm. You know that satellite kit uh, uh, Blockstream just uh, you know released. It's a great thing, you know. But how how user friendly is it, especially for countries? You know where you have this is I guess you know for for countries who have um, you know who don't have much uh, you know access to bandwidth, internet connection. So uh, what, what's the practical what's the practical uh, you know think about this? I mean, is it is it user friendly? Like like can you set it up if if you have, you know, a, a satellite kit like that? Yeah, so uh, I think that there's actually our marketing director, Neil would find he had a like really great talk on uh, in our YouTube channel. It's like uh, the, the entire talk was talking about like uh, when the internet goes down, like how blockstream satellite would benefit uh, people. I urge you to take, check that out. Um, but in my point of view, like it's a, it's a step forward. I wouldn't say it's it's like reach the level that anyone can just pick it up and use the satellite. It's not there yet, but but like it's a great step forward and it's a it's a great concept of stay true to Bitcoin's philosophy. And in the ongoing roadmap, we are also planning something like to to use more of the satellite. So right now, we are really glad to see that uh, like there is a, a good react a great reaction of the satellite uh, kit announcement on Twitter and it looks like people really like to experiment with it and at the same time we are also trying to uh, improve the uh, transmission um, and uh, map dish, dish alignment tool on our uh, satellite uh, website the satellite uh, section uh, that's something we are well, working to improve right now uh, and also like if if you have feedback on in terms of the UX of uh, setting up the satellite uh, kits, uh, also uh, just like drop, drop me a DM on Twitter. But, but yeah, I just believe this is a, a really good first step and it has a lot of potential going forward. Yeah, because I guess it's a lack of, um, you know, even like, like, like the fundamental uh, technological equipment people are lacking or or the, the connection to into the internet, uh, especially is there like billions of people having no access. Uh, that that would be like a beautiful uh, dream come true. If uh, you know, I mean, I'm gonna sh give a shout out, you know, to people like Alessandro Cesare uh, in Venezuela, um, who's working, you know, on all this project, or Randy Bruto of Locha Mesh, or Richard Myers from Global Mesh Network. Is there like a more tightened collaboration community? Uh, you know, um, is there some projects maybe going on in the background with Blockstream to, you know, to accelerate this process for people, you know, in countries like Venezuela or any other, you know, let's say not f developed countries or, or hyper inflationary countries? Yeah, actually, we had some uh, interesting discussion on the concepts uh, on what we can do going forward. Uh, but but right now it's still like more at a discussion stage because like in order to do something that actually uh, bringing to the hands of the users, there's a lot of work to be done than discussing concepts and iterating the ideas. So I don't want to over promise right now that we are going to have something, but, but then we are going to have something. And 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 I think I think that like fixing the uh, in internet uh, accessibility problem is, is is really crucial. Like it's it's going to like uh, help people uh, like have have an alternative choice whenever they need the freedom. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, beaming beaming money through the space is just cool, right? <laughs> Imagine <laughs> doing that with gold. That's Imagine the future. Doing that yeah. with dollar, right? You can't. That's the beauty of Bitcoin. You can just beam blocks in the space. <laughs> I mean, this is the <laughs> ultimate goal. Yeah, I mean, being totally independent from the internet, that would be awesome. Yeah. You know, from anywhere in the world. I mean, that's like oh, total, that... total, total self-sovereignty, right? That's also going to create a generation of true digital nomads, not worry about the internet speed while you are out there somewhere trying to work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So before we wrap up, what's your like, uh, if you like zoom out a little bit, what's your, 
um, I don't know, your position, your, your thoughts, your feelings, what's going on right now in the world with, with Bitcoin? How can we, you know, uh, improve or speed up the process of education or, uh, you know, with everything that's going on, uh, all these crazy events, you know, with the central banks and, and geopolitical, macroeconomical, I want to just know your thoughts. Where do we stand right now? Mm -hmm. Celine. Yeah, you can go first. Okay, sure. Um, I think uh, right, right now, uh, with, the, with the pandemic and with the Fed printer going brrrr, right? <laughs> uh, I think I think Bitcoin <laughs> is in a, obviously in a very, very, very special position because, you know, it's a, it's detached to anything. Like, it, it gives, like, for a lack of a better, better word, it gives zero fucks to what is happening in the world. Right, and it just continues to do its own thing, right? TikTok, next block, right? So, so that's the beauty of Bitcoin. Uh, it's 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 totally unrelated to whatever is happening. The world can burn down, and the blockstream satellite will still continue beaming blocks, <laughs> right? So, I I think that uh, that's where, that was a uh, last year. Uh, you know, um, I read this tweet somewhere. It says, you know, Bitcoin is the hedge to everything else falling apart. And little did I know, or little did we all uh, know that 2020 is when everything will fall apart, <laughs> right? So now everything's falling apart and this is exactly the moment that Bitcoin was made for. So I, I, I think with the, with the new users that on board, it's, uh, it, should be, it should be our goal to help them do on board, uh, help them onboard Bitcoin in a way that's, that is right. Right, so using non-custodial services, not having their, keeping their money on exchanges, avoiding KYC as soon as, uh, like as much as possible, doing coin joins and you know all that stuff. So, and all of that stuff. Uh, so for 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 the only feedback, like the only my only advice to the developers who who are looking to improve the UX of their project or who receive feedback is to just be, be open-minded, and you you'll be surprised like how how little. Uh, of this trade, a lot of developers have like they're so romantic about the thing that they have built uh, that they're they're just not receptive to what the users are saying, right? So and they're pretty hard. I, I like, love the word romantic here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean they're so in love with the stuff that they have built, which is awesome. That's why that stuff is awesome. Yeah. Uh, but they, they they just don't want to leave that idea, and they just don't want to uh, go into that mindset where which will only end up improving their product and getting more users that, you know, uh, if you have ever been proven wrong in life before, how do you know that you're not wrong about it right now? And yeah. all of us, all of us, 100% of us have been wrong about something or many things in life in life before, right? So a little humility can go a long way and just being open to the feedback, I think would be. And that's the only way to learn, you know, um... If you don't fail, you're not going to learn if you don't get any like feedback or criticism or whatever it is, yeah. you know. So, Lane, yeah. what's your, what's your yeah. position? Are we on that critical juncture? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I agree with everything um, Mike just uh, mentioned. Uh, like, it's, it's also like, uh, like, like it's very important for everyone in the space to be open mind enough uh, because, you know, like Bitcoin itself, it is is an experiment. It has been really successful, but it's it's like it's an experiment. It's an innovation. That means what we are building on it. It's also experiment, and you know there there's a. It's always going to be a lot of failure of experiments lead to the ultimate success. And you know like like whatever you are building like a, like developer or designer like i think i think one thing always need to keep in mind is never fall in love with anything you build like it's always going to be willing to scrap everything to start from ground zero because that's the that's what the way to go and, and also another thing i would like to add is is also kind of connected with uh, this kind of um, ma uh, mental uh, ma mindset of like falling in love with the pro product uh, we have built. So uh, I think a lot of people there try to um, educate new users the technology and mindset and philosophy of Bitcoin. Like they have like very great uh, intention there, but sometimes good intention can turn bad if you didn't um, 
are represented presented a way in a way that people can understand. So, for example, like uh, I think I think if a, if a very non technical new user go go the step as far as try to you know get their hardware wallet and. Uh, and, and, and you know, to try off from custodial service that that's like a really great step forward. But but there was a case that people were still like like one, one, one people saying, oh, I'm I'm trying to use a hardware wallet now. Is this secure enough? Like you say, no, you you have to do this and that. Like this is not secure enough. But but like people are kind of uh, forget about uh, how secure it is. It's not only. Uh, based on the theory, like like there's just like a zero uh zero edge case, like like you consider all the scenario. That's not how it works. It's it's really depends on the technical skill level of the user himself or herself. Because you know if if you 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 force people to go miles further to try to do all the like complex settings that beyond their skill set. There's only two scenarios. The first scenario is they are gonna mess up and they are gonna lose their coins. And the second scenario which is just like more likely maybe over 90% that will happen is they will just give up and they think, oh, okay, whatever I do looks like, you know, there's always a warning. There's always not, not secure. It looks like this whole Bitcoin thing is not reliable at all. Like it doesn't look safe. It lo doesn't look like I can I can use it. Maybe I'll just give up or they are just go going to places like oh, the whole custodial service that kind of, you know, sometimes they are shady. So so I think that's the worst result we want to be looking at. So, so definitely yeah. we always need to keep in mind to like how to make it make sense to people. 100% mm -hmm. agree. I think feeling dumb, end up feeling dumb. Like, you know, I'm, I'm too stupid to do this. It's the worst feeling that a user can get. So, yeah. yeah. By the way, how long until we not acknowledge those cool lights behind Celine? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, where are you? Are you in the disco or where are you, Celine? What is that? <laughs> well, it's, it's just like my room decoration. Actually, I don't uh, have other light source here. <laughs> so so that's why like, I usually uh, change the mode of this and turn this really bright to use as like a you know, normal room light. But now I'm backlitting, so if I turn it super bright, like my whole face is dark. So it kind of like makes me right now. <laughs> wow. But uh, yeah, anyways, I, I like, yeah, thanks. I kind of it's a like, UX like thing. The, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's it's like almost 12 a.m. here, so like I like the way that when I'm uh, kind of a night old night person, and I like the way that when I walk walk, uh, it's kind of in a very cyberpunk uh, immersive environment. So I know, you know, I'm I'm making something that's built for the future. <laughs> yeah. Nice, awesome, yeah. So yeah, let me just yeah let's say this again. Um, I mean. Definitely, I'm with you. You know, to be honest with you, I mean, it's it's a total shift in mindset. Also, to take full, you know, total responsible self responsibility. You know, so I think custodial will be still a big thing for a lot of people, especially you know for older people, maybe older generations. I don't want to call them boomers, or, but I think custodial services uh, before you know they screw up, they you know they fuck up and lose their coins. I think it's. Uh, that Bitcoin, it's uh, I think it's better than you know than than nothing, right? I mean, uh, so um, just just a question. I mean, do you think if 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 there is a, like a you know a tipping point coming, you know, like whatever uh, a meltdown of the economy, crash? I mean, are we ready? Are we ready for for you know a, a specific uh, critical adoption rate? Uh, I think my take on that is, to be honest, it doesn't really matter if you're mm -hmm. ready or not. At the end of the day, free markets will decide whether mm -hmm. we were ready or not, and it will only be evident in retrospect. So uh, the the only thing we can do is just build, build, build. And to me, it doesn't to me it doesn't feel like there will be like one one single moment looking back where everything changed. It will be like a, a long process. So even even until now, it uh, from the day of Genesis block in 2009, uh, January to today, uh, there has not been a one single moment where just Bitcoin like, like took over, uh, like generated a lot of interest, uh, like one specific, like there have been these bold runs. So the beauty of Bitcoin is that everyone has a skin in the game and everyone has an incentive to make it better because everyone want the 
number go up, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so, so the incentives are beautifully aligned for everyone to make this thing work in a manner that's fair to everyone. So it's not centralized, it's working as intended because if, if, if it ends up, you know, if things fall apart, then everyone loses. So, so, so that's, that's what I mean that free markets will decide because, you know, it just Bitcoin's incentive system keeps everyone aligned to make it better. Okay, so you're saying once demand is really there and like really visible, everything else mm -hmm. will follow, right? And especially UX will become like a dominant <laughs> Or let's say, yeah, to be honest, my answer is, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know if Bitcoin is ready because mm -hmm. it will only be evident in retrospect and looking back, was Bitcoin ready for that or not? Mm -hmm. So, Lane, what's your perspective? Yeah, yeah so, so I, I definitely agree. I think there, w there won't be a like single point when you look at it, is it's ready because that, that, that's never the case. Like technology is just constantly iterating and evolving. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Um, and you know, if you if you actually look back, uh, like from the beginning, like uh, like the the, the two thousand nine, two thousand ten, and if you look at that time, the security and the UX, and look at now the security and the UX, you know, like it's it's not like one step forward; it's like multiple steps yeah. forward already. And mm -hmm. and at every every single moment right now, like people are building, and you know, at the same for example, at the same given level of UX, like the security level is always improving. So there, there's there's like ne never a moment of maximum security or maximum a good UX. It's it's always a balancing on um, um, how how acceptable and how you know people are able to use it. And the people who come into Bitcoin, they are also constantly learning, evolving with the technology. Or contributing, building, or or just to get the word out, and you know, like it's 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 a it's it's a thing that will like uh, free the, the market will decide. Uh, and another thing I want to add is like there's a lot of people right now are uh, building on on the uh, design and development, and you know, uh, Square Crypto has the, this uh, design com community actually. Uh, both uh, Mayak and myself are in. Um, and, and it's like a, there's a lot of amazing people there, uh, and they are also um, kind of providing grant to um, encourage the buildings. Um, and I think I think a lot of people are already uh, are working on to accelerate the uh, development of Bitcoin on uh, more like a micro level. So on the macro level, we can look at is you know uh, what whatever we build like a better better UX for Bitcoin Core or like uh, more easy to use Node or Wallet. Uh, that's that's also for someone who already tried to get into Bitcoin or already learning a bit of Bitcoin. And another thing we, we might want to take a look at is for for the maybe still the, the vast majority who are not in the Bitcoin yet, they might heard Bitcoin sitting on the sideline and just look at the price and you know all those stuff and maybe formal when the when the number go up or the people who actually there are still people never heard of of Bitcoin because that's just not like across with their daily life. Like how are we trying to improve the UX and try to build those people in that that's evolves in uh, how we get message out and how we op optimize the search results of you know what kind of resource uh, people can get because if you take a look at the google search results like the entire um, learning journey uh, of bitcoin is very fragmented so if i search what is bitcoin uh, from the point I search what is Bitcoin, there's a, a, a solid way, I c a solid direction I could go into because it, it might introduce me the new concept of uh, mining. It might introduce me some, like, a lot of alien concepts that not going to make sense for people and that a lot of people just drop off as a process, right? So like how we try to craft this, this uh, my macro level omni-channel UX, we call it. Like how do we craft this kind of experience and try to bring in more people in and, uh, and then, you know, they don't eventually fall into the trap of buying a shitcoin instead and they actually stick to, you know, uh, purchase Bitcoin and stick with it. So that, that's all something within the scope that we need to think about. 
Okay, one last question. What what is your vision like in ten years? Well, I mean, not only like you know the in terms of price or number go up or but that too, but how do you see how do you see society evolving on a Bitcoin um, you know root layer? How, you know the day to day like uh, this is something like where I usually ask my guests like um, what is it like when people ask you okay what's going to change for for people like you know for the average people out there. What, what's the day-to-day -day life's going to change? What is technology going to exponentially evolve? Is it going to, people going to work less or, you know, retire earlier, have whatever life extension, uh, mm -hmm. transportation, energy uh, technologies popping up, you know, like what is it that we are, what, what do you see? What do you see in the future? I, so, I think, uh, yeah, go ahead, Salim. Yeah, so you go first. <laughs> Uh, so I personally uh, think that we are going to get free, uh, as in free to do more creative work uh, and not manual labor and all of that stuff would be mostly like hopefully automated and, you know, uh, autonomous, right? So for example, self-driving cars and all of that. So, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, Oh, self-driving cars, oh, robots, that means jobs are going, like jobs are not going to go away. They're only going to shift to new categories. And we don't even know what these kinds of categories are will be, right? So for example, five years ago, if I would say that there's this category called uh, an Instagram influencer, you have to post beautiful pictures of yourself and you get to travel the world for free and all of that stuff and you'll be paid for it. And you would say, you know, are you fucking kidding me? Like, <laughs> right? So, the, uh, so what it means is that I'm not against influencers. I'm not in favor of it. It's just a neutral statement. It means that uh, people are getting more free to get paid to do what they love to do. And I see this trend going forward. And where Bitcoin fits in all of this is that the internet itself is like the WWW is only 30 years old. So the next 10 years, where I see this going is like Bitcoin acting as the base monetary layer for this new internet. Uh, where a lot of the stuff that you do, a lot of your, like all of your data, it comes from the data centers, like sitting in those rooms full of servers back to you. So full nodes uh, beautifully are a part of that. So you, you, all of all of the Bitcoin data, all of your all of all of your transactions, all, all the stuff that you do with the Bitcoin, you that's why on Umbrella, you know, we say become Bitcoin, like you become it, like you, you are now Bitcoin, right? So so I think this trend will will see going into Web three, where it will be like you become the internet again, not data centers or monopolies. So yeah. Yeah, 100% agree. I think the, tr the overall trend is like more people are have more choice to, to do what, what they actually love are because right now there, there, okay, there are a lot of jobs, but maybe uh, like in the future at some point going to actually not maybe definitely going to be taken over by like artificial intelligence and all those. But the thing is, are those jobs actually what people love to do right now? Like if they if, if they don't have to do this, like will new technology enable them to, to to pursue their true passion? I think that's the most important thing. And and I think you know this pandemic actually already uh, we can see a bit of it, like how uh, VR is like accelerating, and and you know re really a lot of people who who never try to uh, actually have ha have doubt on the current stage of vr uh, get get like a headset including myself and it, it was that definitely like beyond my expectation and i can see easily uh in, in the future like like vr create uh, with the uh, te technical maturity of uh, vr ai and bitcoin like people will be able to like depend less and less on the physical location uh, and depend less and less on um, you know like like where you were born like what's what was your uh, like family background or like like what what's what's your race like what's your gender what's your creed like all these are going to matter less and less so I think that's the overall change we we are going going into and Bitcoin is definitely like a, a colorblind money and and we, we and it's really it's really excited and looking forward to see that emerge. Wow. 
Um, yeah, that's, you know, why I'm asking, because this is, we could go down the rabbit hole, because um, after, you know, uh, reading Jeff Booth's book on uh, deflationary technologies, you know, and, and, and listening to his interviews, and I had him on, his, on my show, it, it's it's just, you know, and, and I see, do you see, like, people... Um, do you see like more and more autonomous, uh, you, I don't want to call them citadels, but like uh, free private cities, you know, like self-autonomous cities, more and more independent from the state, from, you know, government having their own uh, autonomous zones on a, in a Bitcoin, Bitcoinized economy with technologies that we can't even comprehend evolving? Mm-hmm. I mean, offline, like in physical world, I, I I don't honestly see that because governments have no incentive not to, you know, nuke, nuke mm-hmm. those people. You, just, mm-hmm. you know, you just bomb them and then you reclaim uh, the territory again. So I, mm-hmm. I don't see that happening. In, or or they could be like some islands, like for example, let's say Malta, where you know the government to attract all the rich Bitcoiners. You know, they set set up an autonomous state or you know. But it feels like internet is a more like the web three is a like more of that sort of a place because we are moving to uh, this virtual internet only like major internet world where you can have autonomous sub like mini worlds in the internet right you're free to join them you're free to leave them and that's where you know the intel uh it's interwoven with the monetary aspect with bitcoin and lightning and it's interwoven with the vr and ar so i see i see all of that stuff happening on the internet but for me to see that happening uh, in 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 uh, in the world, like go- governments have no incentive to let that happen, and that can be easily controlled. You just kill, you just kill those people, and <laughs> so yeah. Okay, now I want to hear something positive for before we wrap up, <laughs> <laughs> Celine. <laughs> What do you see in the future? So, we got to see I would like a bright future for the people. Otherwise, Bitcoin doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? We yeah, need, so, we, so, yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, I believe, uh, you know, like VR is going going to create more choices for people because you, you less depend on the physical uh, existence of yourself. And, and, and I think and, and I think, um, you know, like, like in terms of government right now, you can already see uh, the, the, you know, right now there's actually the people who are tra- uh, starting to get into power uh, right now are the ones who are having technical background instead of the pure, pure politicians, because I think this is a good trend. And what we need to be focused on is just to ensure that the future technology like advanced is not in the hands of a few, but in the hands of many. And I think uh, with Bitcoin and uh, like with the technology, for example, like starting, like providing internet access to everyone is it's just going to be harder and harder for any uh, center point to control the masses. And and I, I am very optimistic on that. Wonderful. Really yeah, enjoyed this I conversation. One, 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 yeah, go ahead. Uh, to, to what Celine said, I just want to say, you know, why speculate the future when you can build it? Like, <laughs> That's a practical approach. Uh, Love it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, definitely agree. I think it's like take action is is always more important than say. Yeah, yeah, stay focused. Yeah. So, where can my listeners viewers find you? You want to like uh, give us some links? I mean, I'm going to put your Twitter uh, handles anyway. But are there any other information resources you want to direct my listeners to? Uh, Celine or? Yeah. So. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not like uh, always stick to my phone because I. I'm kind of like like building and like thinking a lot and reading a lot. Uh, but then definitely like my DM is open and you can drop me a message anytime. Mm-hmm. Mayank, same here. Same here. DMs open on Twitter. You can find me at Mayank dot d o t c h, and uh, DMs always open. And uh, people can uh, already, uh, what do you call it, pre-subscribe on Get Umbrella. Get for... Umbrella, yeah. Awesome. Uh, for early access, G E T U M B R E L dot com. So yeah. All right, guys. I hope we can continue this or repeat this conversation and go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole next time. And thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, having us. Yeah, it was a really nice conversation to have. And thanks Same for here. having us. All right. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Celine. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Yeah. Bye. All right. That was a really fascinating conversation. I wish we could go just deeper, but I just didn't want to, you know, overextend it more than uh, approximately we're above an hour. So I hope you loved it. Uh, let me know your questions, your feedback. Um, uh, make sure you follow Mayank and Celine on Twitter and myself on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Telegram. Uh, please love it, subscribe it, share, uh, retweet uh, us, and, and also subscribe, please, on my podcast and YouTube channel. And let me know if you have any special guest wishes or wishes, you know, for um, for uh, special episodes to go down the rabbit hole on Bitcoin. Thank you so much for support and for listening. And my email address is hello at the totalconnector.com. If you want to sponsor me, if you're an ethical Bitcoin sponsor, get in touch with me. And yeah, have a great day. Thank you.